The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink Community TV, its sponsors, or partners. Technology's Cooking Experience. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Mama G's Cooking Experience. I'm Mama G. I live here in Sudbury, Ontario, and I'm here to show you a few tricks of the trade as I am a 26-year veteran chef, and I feel that some things that are so simple uh, just kind of get missed uh, within communication or even taught to people. So today's episode, we're going to hit a few subjects. We're gonna hit the, pro the product of show will be eggs. So as you know, here in Sudbury, we have different kinds of eggs. We have quail eggs, we have duck eggs, we have goose eggs, and we have chicken eggs. Now, we have many different kinds of chicken eggs as well. So my suggestion is to come and get yourself the farm fresh chicken egg, which is available readily in a lot of places in town, but especially here at Seasons Pharmacy. The chicken egg that comes straight from the farm is the fresher egg. It's the egg where the albumin will stick together, you, it won't fall apart, your yolks are gonna be solid and creamy. Um, this is the kind of egg that is a better uh, digested for you. It's got the higher uh, omegas in it. This is what you would like to do. And just, guys, honestly, make sure you're buying Canadian eggs. Uh, some grocery stores ship a lot of eggs from the States. There's no point in buying an American egg. you got really great Canadian ones here. So in our first segment today, we're going to talk about how to properly hard boil an egg, how to make really fluffy and beautiful um, scrambled eggs and how to make a gluten-free quiche that the whole family can enjoy. In our family we believe that breakfast for dinner is quite nice. It's not always got to be meat and potatoes. So we do things like breakfast for dinner which is scrambled eggs, toast, bacon, or pancakes and bacon. We eat a lot of bacon because it's delicious. So what I'm going to start off is we're going to do the hard boiled egg. Hard boiled eggs is good for lunch, it's good for breakfast, it's good for putting in salads, it's good for just a pop like a snack like that. Um, you can shred it and put it into all kinds of different items. The one thing that most people do when boiling a hard boiled egg is they overcook it. And you get that weird, not weird, you get like a gray blue uh, layer on the outside of the yolk and it tastes very eggy and it smells very sulfury. The best way to combat that and make sure that that doesn't happen is to time your egg perfectly. I'm all about taking a cold egg, putting it into a fast boiling water and the number is 10 minutes. So we're gonna boil two eggs right now and, the, and my suggestion is to put a timer on. So as you can see my water is at a full boil. Drop in those cold eggs. I just took them out of the fridge recently. From there I'm going to put my timer on. Once the timer goes off I'm going to put the egg, submerge the eggs into cold, wa uh, cold water. Get them to get cold real fast and then I'm going to peel them right away. Now I can store these eggs in a water solution in just in a plain baggies or at this point I can put them all in a jar and put hot vinegar in there and it'll create a pickled egg which takes about three days in the fridge to take just honestly it's that simple. So while that is boiling I'm going to also teach you how to make the fluffiest most beautiful uh, uh, scrambled egg that I learned in college. I went to Algonquin College and uh, in 1998 and it was the number one thing that our chefs taught us how to do because it's the number one eaten product for breakfast out of everywhere is scrambled eggs. So um, I'm going to take my bowl, 
and then I'm going to take my frying pan. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to have a medium high heat for your pan and let that come. So put your hand one inch above the metal. Please try not to use a Teflon coated pan. The chemicals of the Teflon that get transferred to your food through the fat source, eventually it's going to hurt you on the inside. Just try to do a cast iron or a straight metal pan. You'll get a nicer, fluffier feel and it's safer. So my cast iron pan, I have it coming up. I've taken a good slice, probably about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of butter. Get that nice and melted, but don't let it brown, okay? So the goal is not to let it brown. Crack your eggs into your bowl. Take your whisk. And then pre, pre break your, pre break, break your eggs and just whisk them up. And you're like, yeah, anybody can do that. Then you take ice cold water. The reason why you want ice cold water and is because it shocks the yolk and it, 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 it solidifies it. So as you can see, your butter is nice and golden and fluffy all in there. I've got my eggs, and this is a very last minute thing to do. Don't get everything going and then be like, oh, I'm gonna stop. So probably put in about a good tablespoon for two eggs, and then you're just gonna whisk it. You're gonna whisk it so much that it looks super, all the same color, a bright, bright yellow. And it's gonna be bubbly. I see the steam coming up from my pan just before the eggs are gonna be put in. See the nice, light, fluffy egg, uh, bubbles you have in there? Get all that you have from your pan and whisk it in the pan. Whisk it in the pan, there's no color. The, true, the trueness of an egg of a scrambled egg is to have no outside color, no brown. Don't salt your egg before you go and cook your scrambled egg. It'll change the composition and make your egg really tough. And as you can see, it took about 35, 36 seconds, and it'll be great. See, nice, fluffy, bright yellow, take them off quickly so that they don't color. And then you put them in your bowl, plate, whatever you would like. At this point, this is where you would want to flavor your egg. This is where I would have gotten an A. Nice and bright yellow, beautiful scrambled fluffy eggs. Mama's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. <laughs> Welcome back to Mama G's Cooking Experience, brought to you graciously by Eastlink Community TV. I'm gonna finish off by showing you, um, so the egg has been boiled now for 10 minutes. The timer went off. I'm gonna bring it over to my sink and put it into super cold water. And I'm just gonna let that sit in there for a few minutes while I, so pour the water out. That way you have just your two e your eggs in the pot and just let the cold water run on it. Make sure that it's exclusively cold, no, no warm at all, okay? 
So that way it gives a good shock to the egg and that works out perfectly. While that is cooling down, that'll take about a good four or five minutes. While that's cooling down, I'm gonna show you how to get our crust ready for our quiche. So I've boiled off six potatoes, six small potatoes, and one sweet potato. The reason why I put the sweet potato in there is so that it gives a nice flavor and more fiber to the crust. This is gonna be our base for our gluten-free quiche. So I boiled this for 15 minutes. My knife is able to go in and out of it quite easily, which is what we want. I'm gonna take the extra water out. It's okay to keep a little bit of water in the bottom as you're gonna want something to, uh, to hold it together. So I'm gonna put a little bit of, um, I'm going to put a little bit of butter, some cream and some labna. Labna is a cream cheese-ish product. Um, it's, it's a cheese. This one here is flavored with garlic and herbs. You just want a little bit of cheese in your uh, mashed potatoes when you're doing a crust so that it sticks it together. You want that thing to stick together as well as one egg. It's gonna be baked with the egg product on the inside, so that's gonna be fine. You're not gonna get sick. So, put your egg in there. I've got my butter in there. I'm gonna put some labna in there, probably about two tablespoons. So you can put cream cheese in there, about two tablespoons. And look, we all cook the way that we cook at home. You know, our grandmas, our moms taught us, you know, it's not always about having the proper spoon or having the proper exact science of everything. When it comes to cooking, you have to, you have to use basic kitchen common sense. Sometimes you overboil your potatoes, don't put so much cream or butter in. Or if your potatoes are a little bit harder because they just came out of the ground, you're gonna have to boil them a little bit longer. The goal is to make sure that you can get your stuff, your fork or your knife easily in and out with no problems. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of cream in here as the sweet potatoes are a little bit um, stiffer than my regular potatoes. Get my beautiful masher that everybody has at home. Usually at home I would have the music playing, it'd be a big scene, because I find cooking very therapeutic. Nice and mashed. You can put it through the food processor if you want. You can use a handheld immersion. But I like the masher because I like a little bit of chunk still. You know, it makes a big, when you're biting into it, it makes a big difference. So as you can see, it's kind of soft, but still kind of chunky at the same time. Get my, my pie tin. So I'm using a glass pie tin for the simple reason that I don't have to uh, oil it or, or butter it or any of that stuff. It's just going to happen on its own. It's a lot easier to scrape out of a glass than it is a metal. I'm just going to put this in the bottom of the pan. Maybe I put, oh it looks good, looks good. Okay, then I'm going to mash it, push it up against the sides. It's gonna feel soft, guys, I understand. I'm gonna take some of this out. It's gonna feel soft because you have the egg in there, but I promise once you put it in the oven with the other stuff, it'll harden, okay? And because this is potato, you, I like to do a little bit thicker of a crust than normal, uh, like pie dough for these kinds of things because it's part of the meal. It's not, you know, it's good, it's good. So I'm just gonna get that base there so you can see that I have a nice thicker crust on the edges here, a nice bottom. I've collected some 
uh, beautiful produce. And I'm gonna put some spinach on the bottom. Now try not to put too much um, pro other vegetables in there as you still need to put your eggs in. So we're just gonna put a little bit of this on the bottom here. Take whatever vegetables that you like. I'm a pepper mushroom onion girl because I, I like those flavors and I think most people enjoy the flavors. I try to stay away from green peppers as green peppers can be quite bitter. Nice and thin. Now, as you can see, you can also do a dice, whatever you feel the most comfortable doing, which is whatever works for you. And if you're feeding young children, 100% do a small dice. These mushrooms are giant right now, which are beautiful. So one mushroom will do the trick. Sprinkle some on there. Sprinkle some some peppers. Get some nice beautiful color. Kind of push it down. You know, push it into the potato a little bit. That looks good. All we're gonna do at this point is take three eggs, whisk them up, nothing in there, and pour it in. And we'll be back to finish off our quiche, hard boiled eggs, and our fruit salad. Mamaji's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. <laughs> All right, guys, so now that I have all of the vegetables into the bottom of the fruit, uh, the bottom of the quiche, I'm just gonna put a little bit of seasoning. This Goya adobo seasoning is like an all-purpose seasoning. It's fantastic, it's got your salt in there so you don't have to worry too much. I put a little bit of seasoning on there. I have cracked three eggs. I'm just gonna put them on top. You don't want too much eggs in here. Some people like it very heavily but most people aren't big on egg pie. So now I'm gonna put this into the oven at 345 degrees, no, 375 degrees. Should take about 20 minutes, and now I'm gonna show you how to, how the properly boiled egg looks like. Once the eggs have cooled down from your boiling, you get a bowl of cold water, pre-crack the egg on the side, and look how easy it is to peel. It just comes right off quite quickly, no problem. Dip it in the cold water to take all of the leftover shell off it, and cut through. No, no green, no brown, a little bit of darker uh, yolk on the inside, which is creamy and soft and is really perfect for when you do deviled eggs. Take that out, pop it with some mayo, salt, pepper, pipe it back in and everybody loves it. Then we're gonna move on to our last dish, which is a homemade fruit salad. <laughs> When making homemade fruit salad, one of the first things you really want to make sure is that you wash all your fruit, even fruit that has peel. The reason why you want to wash fruit that has peel is when you take your knife and you cut through that fruit, you're taking all of the dirty stuff on the outside of the fruit and mashing it into the inside of the fruit. So make sure that you wash all your fruit. Cold water is best. I also want to make sure to talk to you guys about a grapefruit today. Grapefruit to me when I was a kid was one of the things that my grandparents always had at their house and they always made sure that I ate. 
but they used to do it where they would cut the grapefruit in half and sprinkle sugar on the outside. So take your grapefruit and cut it in half. Now there's this beautiful knife that you can buy at some stores where you it's curved and each side is serrated and where you go inside each segment and you curve around and you get all your little pieces out without the membrane. The membrane is what makes the grapefruit bitter. That's what you're like, oh, what's that flavor? What's that flavor? It's the membrane. So that's the, the one way to get it out for your fruit salad, which my grandparents used to do all the time. Take all of your wet fruit. Most people think that all fruit salad needs a juice. You don't need juice in fruit salad. What you need to do for fruit salad is to pick the appropriate fruit that it will mix together and that has enough juice from the fruit that you don't need to incorporate a sugary, concentrated juice from a pot. This, it's not necessary. When you take items like strawberries, citrus fruit, and grapes, there's enough juice amongst the three items right there that is gonna make sure that you have all enough juice for it to be not dry, I guess. So let's take our banana. Bananas we always try to incorporate because they're a high and natural source of potassium. They, potassium stops leg cramps. It helps you, uh, for me, it helps me sleep. I can eat a banana before bed and I, I feel good. So nice slices. And a, and a fruit salad literally takes four or five minutes a day. It's good for you. It's, and you can also buy the fruit on the discount rack if you're just making a fruit salad because it's going to be eaten right away. Don't be afraid of bruises. Don't be afraid of fruit that don't look perfect. It's, it still tastes the same. You know, just cut off that little bit of stuff that you don't like and move on. Some nice slices of strawberries. They're nice and juicy. They're not as juicy as the strawberries that we get here locally in the summertime. Just want to put a shout out to all of our berry farmers out there. Your stuff's great. Take the grapes off the vines. If you have young kids, cut the grapes in half. Some people, they are considered a choking hazard for young kids. All kids love bananas. All kids love the freshness and the uh, juiciness of fresh fruit. So here we'll get some strawberries. This is a beautiful orange. This is called a raspberry orange. And I just want to show you on the inside. Look at the color on that. So beautiful. So what I do is I take the top off, the bottom off, take the skins off, and just dice it. Same thing that we'll do with the grapefruit. Then all you do at that point is just mix them all together. So much juice coming from this orange. The color is just beautiful. Grapefruit is the same as well. See the juice coming off of there? It's perfect. Don't put too much apple in there as it can absorb all your juice. Just enough for crunch. And look, not everything has to be a perfect cut. Not everything has to be magnificently looking so... Not everything has to be the same size. Look at the juice at the bottom of that, that bowl. Do you know what I mean? Like, look at that. That's just naturally occurring juice. The acid is gonna, from the apples and the, the acid from the grapefruit and the orange is gonna coat the apple in enough so that it doesn't brown. Here we go, fresh fruit salad, under eight minutes, under six bucks. 
Our quiche, again, under six bucks. Our scrambled eggs, under three dollars. The whole thing that you can do all of this for under 15 bucks. Fruit salad, scrambled eggs for the kids that don't want to be eating quiche. Quiche for the adults that have all the nutrients that you would need for dinner. It's not always a breakfast item. And now we've taken out our beautiful quiche out of the oven after 20 minutes and we see that the crust is nice and hard and not and soft and you want to make sure that the inside of the quiche is hard as well, no jiggling. I want to thank you for coming and joining me today on Mama G's Cooking Experience. I'd like to thank Seasons Pharmacy for the kitchen and the products. I'd like to thank Medi Sews for these beautiful handmade aprons and I look forward to seeing you next time on Mama G's Cooking Experience experience.